And three, two, one, go. All right, everybody, welcome back into Dota Cinema. Captain's Draft 3.0 presented by, of course, Dota Cinema as well as Moon Deck TV. Our last series of the day, it is Digital Chaos going up against Momless Boys here in this best of three series. I believe this is a lower bracket series coming out. Could be wrong about that. I might be wrong about that. Let me go ahead and check real quick. <clears throat> upper Still, bracket, Mott. Upper, upper bracket. bracket. Upper bracket. All right, I'm losing it. It's been a long day of Dota so far. We've switched out a couple of casters. Earlier on, we had Draskal. Andrew, of course, joining us. Zyori is currently doing production as well as observing. Slax is here as well, probably doing some sorts of stats in a hangout as well. And finally, we have Purge joining us as well. Purge, how are you feeling today so far? I'm pretty good. Uh, a little sad to see our coordinate get banned uh, before we started the stream. He got banned instantly, and someone went, oh... <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, also, Slacks like really begged to leave, but we we forced him to stay and do stats. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. got Slacks. Slacks is our whipping boy currently, and uh, well, buddy, give us that good info. Give us those stats. I want him on the dot. All right. Wow. Damn, he's hitting us with the stats already. Um, so. Obviously, these drafts go by pretty quickly, so we'll have to see what is picked up. Digital Chaos was playing up against Complexity last night. For those of you that didn't see it on Canada Cup, not many of you did, I'm sure. But they went down to Complexity 2-1 in that series. It was pretty close, but uh, sadly, they were not able to win. Uh, they lost right at the tail end of that last game they played. And they played a lot of Medusa for Mason, who is still standing in for Digital Chaos. So this is looking less like a, a tryout, more like this might become a permanent fixture for Digital Chaos. Of course, it will take a while. To, you know, to determine if this is going to be the actual lineup of Digital Chaos. However, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they are going to go ahead and um, have Mason permanently. But we'll wait and see. As the Vengeful Spirit is the first hero picked up so far, Purge. Yeah, you never really know. Um, Mason is pretty reliable. He has strong performances. He doesn't often, if ever, have weak performances. And I think one of the best advantages that you do get out of him. Um, he plays a lot of solo lanes. Um, his hero pool seems decently diverse, and I, th I think he could be a good fit for DC. Yeah. What do we have in the draft so far? Anything too crazy? I'm trying to look through it and just see what would be fun to watch. Timbersaw, Elder Titan, uh, Spirit Breaker and Veg have already been picked up. All of the really strong heroes have been banned out. Uh, I would not mind seeing a Morphling, but that's pretty common still. Night Stalker, of course, is something DC loves to play for 1437, but they'll pick up the Abaddon and the Spirit Breaker. I imagine one of these heroes could be the offline for Bubble. We'll have to wait and see. There's the Night Stalker for Mama's Boys. We got really good disables right now. Um, I really like the trifecta the picks that Mama's Boys did here. Venge is obviously one of the best supports right now. Um, Queen of Pain has great nuking potential and gank power, and Night Stalkers will contribute a lot for disables as well as damage, and not to mention vision. Uh, they do have to deal with the Spirit Breaker, and Spirit Breaker is pretty good against Queen of Pain, pretty good against Night Stalker as well, since you can target those heroes and guarantee that you land some stuns on them, more or less guarantee. Um, Abaddon does give Digital Chaos some good options, so they can do an aggressive dual lane, they can do a Spirit Breaker off lane, very likely they'll do a dual lane, they could do off lane Abaddon if they want to do that as well, so um, I think for the initial picks, these are going to be pretty solid, uh, but with the Night Stalker pickup, they do have a counter to Abaddon, if you can silence Abaddon, um, and force him to pop his ultimate to remove the silence, it can give you a good tactical advantage, or you might just stay silenced for the whole fight. Okay, that's not where I was expecting this game to go. <laughs> All right, Pugna pickup. He's like, okay, well, it could be this, it could be that. Oh, just kidding, it's a Pugna pickup. And a Scarath Mage. They immediately picked by Scarath Mage as well. I mean, Pugna counters Scarath pretty heavily, so it's kind of interesting. They Pugna that, counters but... Queen of Pain. That's um, true. I would say he's decent against Vengeful Spirit as well, since Venge does amp damage and you can decrap an ally. And right now, Mama's Boys doesn't have that much right click damage. So if somebody's in trouble, you can decrep them, you can Aphotic Shield them, you can heal them up. And it's going to make it really hard for Mama's Boys to take a long team fight because with Nether Ward up, man, especially Queen of Pain, if she doesn't have a BKB, she's going to do at least half of her HP pool casting two spells if her ultimate's included in that. So if they can just keep people alive, keep the fight going on for more than like 15 seconds and the fight in the same area, then Digital Chaos just wins it. I am, doesn't even really need to be the same area. I mean, close to it, I guess. The, the ward has massive range. I'm kind of interested to see where this Pugna's going to go. Like... He's definitely not a support. I feel like he's the core in this situation. God, they have like a lot of squishy heroes except for a Spirit Breaker and Bat. Well, 
I guess not a lot. It's super going to be bad, very tanky. And Skyrim, Mage, and Pugna. Not tanky at all. The AM will be picked up as well. So that Mana Void could do a lot of damage to some of these heroes, which is kind of yeah. interesting. AM pick is really smart here because it is a hero that's pretty that much counteracting team. all of those int casters. Skyrim, Mage is going to burn his Mana Pool by casting. Pugna has a lot of Mana Pool. But often doesn't have that many regen items in terms of mana. So very often he'll be low on mana. Should be a very easy kill for AM. But mm -hmm. if he decrypts himself, then he just takes more damage for the mana yeah, in a lot that. of cases. So I think ignoring how Digital Chaos's draft that looks, Mama's really Boys looks like a completely normal draft that you'd see in any game. And Digital Chaos again grabs another hero that's going to deal with one Mama's Boys has. And it's going to be Klinks versus an Anti-Mage, which is a lot of physical damage versus a hero that's going to have some trouble with that. And this is going to be Mason's hero, and it seems like he might add another hero to the repertoire that he's very strong at. Obviously, Dusa, uh, Slark, Weaver, those are some heroes you think of when you think of Mason's name. He'll grab the coins, he can inevitably pick up an Orc and Love Links against the Anti-Mage, and until that Anti-Mage has a uh, meta style, he could be caught out. Also very good against the Queen of Pain, having an Orc and Love Links, so I imagine that they could go for that, or they could go for a more right-click oriented build, maybe get a you know medallion into a Desolate or something along those lines, if they want to just try to do massive amounts of damage, which would also be very strong as well, so I like both drafts. I'm kind of, I don't know how your war is going to play up in the Pugna. It feels like he could get ganked a lot. Um, he could get destroyed pretty easily because he's very squishy on that hero. So hopefully they can have yeah. some heroes helping him out mid lane for at least the early game. God, I, don't, I have no freaking idea. The, the biggest thing they have to worry about is the Night Stalker rotations, I think. It's an awfully Night Stalker. So as soon as it hits four minutes, he needs protection from his allies because NS showing up in a lane and chasing down a low HP, low armor hero like Pugna is going to spell certain doom with a quap on the other side. So um, their first ward is very likely going to make sure they know where Night Stalker is at all times, if possible. I think that's going to be really important. Mm -hmm. Pause is going to come out as Mama's Boys. Got to take a second here to figure things out and uh, get the TC coming out from Hook. So we'll see what happens. All right, Slax, hit us with something. What do you got? Give us a, a story or a stat. I don't care. You know, it takes like at least like 10 seconds to do a stat, right? Yeah, I know. Oh, he had it ready, though. Piece of the pie. Anti-Mage is the most played hero of this guy. Just this guy. Yeah, it was like a rhyme. There's like a really weird, strange rhyme. What the hell? I, I approve. <laughs> Somebody's like taking a screenshot of every stat you post, by the way. They're, like rating them on a scale of one to ten. It's like that one's a six. BZZ Pugna set? It is. Oh, yes. Got That's just, we didn't see this enough. Oh, come on. It's not even a full set. Uh, you, made, you got me. You got my hopes up, dude. He's got the. That, does, does anybody even know what a BZZ Pugna set looks like? I don't think anyone does. I actually have no idea. I do kind of now. I can see what it what it kind of looks like, except for the waste piece is not the BZZ Pugna set. And turn this into um, showcase mode and see what we got going on here. Yeah, I haven't learned much of anything. Dude, I'll, I, Pugna's just a little green man. Like how? Like can't even tell what he looks like half the time. Instant even with the set. Instant here. Ambo's uh, antique bloodstone here, about to be deworded. Uh, I can't. That even is find a it. that is a gem TD ward on the top lane. All right, you got one last chance. I, I, I got it. The feather the one that died. Hutch? Yeah, so it looks like a little birdhouse. Called an antique bloodstone. Really good tower. Oh, really? That's kind of nifty. Okay, I don't play Jeb TD, so I was like super confused as to what you were talking about. <laughs> I had yeah, no that's idea. Like a, it's like a meme from yesterday or the day before. I just oh, talk okay. about Jeb TD wards all the time now. Do you like, dream just, alive? It's like everybody played Jeb TD except me. Am I the only no, person? No, it was basically, basically just me. I was kind of forcing it upon it, everybody, much like I'm doing it now. Ah, great. You know, we can keep talking about Jim TD, that game that I don't play at all and have no understanding of how it works other than it's a tower defense game, so good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. The battle uh, Bambo, hello? You're fine. It's an arcade bolt. They'll get the top rune spot for Promises or Yawar, and we'll, of course, give Hook the bottom rune spot. What's the BZZ? Despite how common the BZZ doesn't say the over saturation. <laughs> One is on yeah. sale for 70 cents. Is that what is it? 70 you're, cents? You're going to quickly learn that you don't really need to read his stats, nor you should you probably digress no, whatever going we're talking to. about. Too. I definitely okay. will. I'm just going to make sure that I get all those stats and the extra knowledge going my way. Listen, those are important stats, all right? All right. What do we got going on? 1437, the Sports Spirit Breaker down bottom. Looks like Bulba will get caught. And Pycat will try to do some work. We'll pop the nice missile with Soxa as well, but we'll get chased down. More mana break. All right, I got my first gold star. <laughs> Hell yeah. Eat it, Purge. Got you got no gold Dude, stars I, today. I, I have two gold stars overall, though. I'm catching up, baby. You are a good job. 
Thanks. This, it really sucks to play aggressive um, offlaner heroes versus anti mage though, because he just drains your mana, and Bulba's already mm -hmm. lost all of his mana and a self here. Yep. It also That's hurts that it's just Avenge support, since Avenge is such a good zoning hero. Great agility, really good stun, really uh, decent armor as well, so she's just great at trading. Yeah, this Venge is just going to work on Bulba. Bulba's like, I have to get a tiny one. I'm going to have Curse. We're going to see if these trades aren't really that great for me. He's going to have to back up. He's already at level 2, but still, he will not get that much experience. The same can be said for Bambo, who's also sitting at level 2. Skyrim will deny himself, I think, which was intentional. Um, yeah. I believe. Yeah, he, he did deny himself to the Ancients, so that's fine. All right. So last hits, of course, Pocket is going to be leading the way. Nice Stalker at six, surprisingly enough. Meanwhile, Batten down bottom is freaking one, so that's not great. Do they have an Iron Talon on the Nice Stalker? The answer is no. He's got a Fairy Fire and Boots of Speed. Good start. Cool thing that AUI did here, basically. He, he Skyrath Mage is a support who has a big mana pool, but he very quickly uses it all by casting Arcane Bolt. What he does is he went mid, and he spammed Arcane Bolt on the Queen of Pain until he was out of mana, and then he bought a couple items and suicided. Doing this, he instantly gets a new mana pool, he buys a TP, which costs him 75 gold, and he immediately TPs mid again with old mana. So, in some ways, it's it's far faster than going mid using your mana running back. Yeah. You can just lose a TP scroll, he loses some time, he doesn't zone the offlaner necessarily, but it's going to give Pugna a lot more last hits. Yeah, you can see already nine last hits for the Pugna, only six for the Queen of Pain. It's obviously not that big of a difference, but it's still enough to make... Uh, make some room for this bug, and he'll even drop down the Nether Blast as well to get some extra last hits. They can start pushing this tower pretty early on here as well. We're setting in, they will see Yapsor with a great Invis rune picked up for AUI 2000, so they know that there is an Earthshaker top lane. There's the charge at Bamboo getting caught. There's going to be the strafe as well. Can Mason get this last right click? Great fairy fire to keep him alive, and 1437 is committed, and will give away first blood to Bamboo. That is not the way they wanted that to go. Yeah, they, they went a little too ham on that. The only way they got a kill is if they got a bash in that one hit there on the Night Stalker and it didn't work out. And then he prevented the, the Spirit Breaker from diving and very, very good for Bamble there. He's going to be happy with that. He gets an Urn of Shadows at the three minute mark and a TP scroll. So very good for him in lane. Yeah. If he can get to level 4 too and get that second point in Hunter of the Night or get a Silence point as well would be fine. But it's going to be nighttime pretty soon here. Four minutes is going to come through, but the even charging in. Oh, in God. Too. That's true. They rotate AUI 2000 down. He's done a great job rotating as the support, but I don't know. This is going to be tough. Pike gets yeah. already up to 20 last hits. <laughs> I'm not reading that. You told me not to that's, read it, so I'm not reading good, it. That, that was a good stat. Gang coming there. It looks like <laughs> AUI is going to die here, most likely. Yeah, Match yeah. Missile will go with here. will fly through. They've got the void. They'll pop it. The product ship will keep him alive for just a moment longer. Meanwhile, Bulba's going to grow and try to get the straight curse of Avernus slow. He gets the fairy fire off and then they get the silence as well. And now Bulba in trouble. He's got the product ship. They're going to grab two and Pie Cat shooting at the last hit. No, it's going to be a double kill for Bambo coming out. Beautifully done for Mama's Boy. And they have a great start already. Yeah, they're going to be really happy with that one there. Um, a bit of a unexpected rotation for the offlaner to go to the safe lane in that kind of a moment, but they read the situation very nicely, and uh, Bambo gets some earn charges and some very much needed gold and experience. He's so he's level 4 again. now. It's yeah. his first night time, oh. and he hasn't even threatened his life dying a lot in the offlane. Hooks, you know, you chase down, he's fine. Creep waves on him, but it looks like so he'll be back up. By the way, Bambo will be back up in five seconds. He'll respawn up and he'll be ready to go with the one earn charge. He's got earn charge to get a kill. Try to chase up to this pug, it would not be a super big shocker to see Pugna get caught by a gank. You can already see the Earthshaker setting up the app source here in the mid lane. He's only level two. The creep wave has been taken all the way around behind the tower, now back at the mid tower for Hook. They'll drop a sentry down as well. The Night Stalker's back up. He's gonna head towards the top lane. And, a little uh, bit of a lazy sentry by Epsor here. Um, you need to place it a little bit more northeast, about here or so. And because he hasn't done that, then it doesn't catch the observer board on the high ground. So very smart of DC as well to put it over here. You can put it on some of these extremities sometimes, something like this to avoid the sentries, but um, just a little bit lazy. On the bright side, he didn't get vision of him by putting the sentry down, but you know that's that's still a pretty common spot here. Yeah, so they won't be able to get the Z ward. Top lane, uh, Bambo as well as Saxa has rotated in, but there's a great dire observer ward here to catch out any vision of rotating heroes into the lane. As you can see, they get some really good vision from it right in this area, roughly. So that's nice. But again, Pycat continues to be the leader in farm. He's got 34 last hits at five and a half minutes. Bulba is finally getting some room to work with after dying. He even purchases up the Iron Town. He'll buy his boot to speed as well. Yaps are getting ready for maybe a gank down bottom. Let me see. And Pycat with this uh, permanent shield actually isn't captured by a bad end. He doesn't have to worry about this a whole lot. 
And he's resisting the magic damage coming out of Scarth Mage. Scarth Mage is actually decent against anti mage because you can prevent his blink, but it only works so well. Spell, spell shield, pretty good stuff for the aim. He's level five now, almost level six. Going for the burning build, he's got one point in stats currently. And we'll see if he gets that second point. He already actually, I think he's holding a point. Or yeah, uh, he is holding at least one point. Yeah, he's yeah. got one in stats and one one skill point ready. Yeah. All right, mid lane. Top lane. Oh, mid lane. There's going to be a rotation. They're looking for you. War. You are might get caught. Yes, he sees it with the obs. Yeah, sure. They're going to jump in. There's the scream of pain. That's Mr. Wave of Terror as well. He sees it. Doesn't matter. He's dead anyways. The Sonic Wave is going to come through. As he, was, he wasn't looking at his map there because there was a period of time where Venge was sitting about here and uh, she was behind him and he didn't react in time. He stayed a little bit too far up. So I, I don't think he was baiting. Surely as soon as you see the Venge, you realize that you're in trouble. So yeah. just a, a rare moment where he was focused on CS and not focused on the map and it got him killed. Yeah, and so that's the first death for the uh, you are in this game so far. Uh, Hook is doing a pretty good job. He's caught back up in terms of CS. He's uh, ahead of uh, you are right now and he's got second in net worth. So actually Mama's Boy is a great start for them. Um, See what this turns into. We're just gonna try to kill the creep wave. 1437 is here to help out as well with the spirit breaker. Not not really a great start to this game though. I, you could argue Mason is getting somewhat free from the top lane, but like that's it. You see the top three net worth. It's all going to Mama's boys at this point. And uh, this Night Stalker has already had a great start too. So yeah, I mean he's essentially three and zero. The only time he died was to neutral. So I mean he's Bambo's playing really well this game. 22 CS. He's level six at seven minutes. Is amazing for an off lane. And it all kind of came down to the the overdive from Sphere Breaker. You know, there's a couple of mistakes that DC has been making that probably shouldn't be happening. But with that said, like, Mama's Boys is very likely to do well in this tournament. They they won our Elimination Mode tournament, That's and right. Captain's Mode is a little similar to that, and yeah. that you're going to get heroes and be forced into picks that you might not want to necessarily do. So if they're more able to play in that kind of a format, maybe this is going to tie into a really good uh, uh, run here for Captain's Draft. I hope so. I really enjoyed the way they played when they were with four Clovers. Uh, they played super well in the Elimination Tournament. And DC are going to look for Sexy Bambo up here in this top lane. There is an Observer Ward that DC will place down. They can charge in, and it is, of course, daytime, but he's got phase boots, so he can try to phase away the charge. will fly. There's going to be the Concussive Shot, the Ancient Seal as well. They just don't have the damage base. It was not positioned. The Fisher will come out as well. The Void will come through. This might be a kill on the Theban. There's the Wave of Terror. One more right click will do the job. They'll drop the Darkness as well. Mason just trying to right click Bambo down. He'll stay alive. Yapsor is getting taken down as well. They get the kill with the Earn Charge on the Spirit Breaker at the end of the day. They silence him up. There's the Void. His Death Pact is now gone. They they use the dust as well. He's very squishy with no death pack. The fisher will come through. A couple more clips will do the job. They're actually going to get the kill with the scream of pain. And they're going to chase down AUI 2000 as well. They have Sonic Wave in one. Will they use it? They can blink it in just a moment. They will not dive the tower, at least not yet. Wave of Terror will get the vision. Will hook jump for this. He's got blink off cooldown now. They see AUI going through the tree line. Oh, he completely juked them. He like actually completely he juked actually, him. Yeah, he just, they have no idea where he is. Charge up to Bambo. He's going to earn himself too. AUI 2000 continues to juke them. Finally, will get spotted. There's the board coming up, but here's the charge. Sonic Wave, Maiko. Scream will do enough damage. And now 437 oh, is about to fall as well. They are just giving away too many Must kills as he talks about. He doesn't get a bash. Oh. The Fisher comes through. It's a double kill for Bambo. They stop the TP. Pugna will take the mid tier one tower, oh. but that is the only good thing that happened in that last minute or two. Man, AUI was juking amazing there. He did have vision of the Spear Breaker, so, or, or of the, uh, the Night Stalker do the Spear Breaker, so he had great vision, but AUI should have, I, I mean, it wasn't necessarily his fault, it was just the, the initial engagement was just them not going in at the right time. If they did that engagement while the, the Klinx was in the right position, then yeah, it would have worked out, but Klinx didn't back off, go in Vs, and go, and go set up for it. Like, they just weren't going to get that kill with the, the way that they tried to do it there. Charge down bottom onto Pycat. He'll take a curse of Avernus hit, so he'll be slowed up a little bit. He'll blink away. You can see the Ancient Seal will come out as well, just not in time. They will still chase this down. Blinks up in eight seconds. It's only level one. He'll bury fire, but he should fall. Here. Maybe not. Great right, Fisher. Fisher on to four. Beautiful stuff from Yapsor, and that might keep Pycat alive. He's going to turn this. He wants to go on to somebody. Promises. Ward doesn't know how much mana left. And then Flash will go. Ooh, they actually keep up the. Um, they get the kill onto the Quap, but they will find you are here in the jungle. Can they man avoid? Yes. And Bubble will take the front of the damage well. Two kills. Got another great picture. A block lost for a second here. One more right click can do the job for the void, and Bambo will get it off. Three dead on DC's side. And Pycat, who should have died there, ends up getting another item of void stone. 
and plenty of gold going his way, and Mama's boys are up 11 to 2. They're just covering each other so ridiculously well here. Like, Fissure getting four people. Like, the, the execution from DC is just not coming together well. They're, they're not using their spells together at the same time. People are not reading the battles correctly and saying, like, okay, well, it's only going to work if we both attack at the same time, or if we both are in position right when the initiation starts. But they're still trying to force these fights, and Mama's Boys are profiting off that, and now there's a Night Stalker that's basically 7 0 and 2 right now. I mean, he has a point booster. He's close to his second component of Agadim Scepter. He'll have this maybe, like, yeah. 16, 17 minutes at the latest. And, and that he point, was able to get phase boots as well. He was doing so well that he's like, yeah, I'll be, I get to be greedy. I'm going to go phase instead of... Second in network, for God's trans. sakes. He's ahead of the Quapu who is mid, which is pretty yeah. damn impressive. He's playing super well right now. And TP down bottom to defend this. They've got Sonic Wave, I believe, so they can pop that off and try to clear the group wave, but... <laughs> oh, no, that's a good one, Mott. You're, you're going to miss out. I think it's gonna I'm reading it now. It's just... I can read them to you if you want, Mott. <laughs> Please, Andrew, no, <laughs> God. I'll just read it myself, I appreciate it, though. I would prefer Slacks read it to me, actually. Why aren't there any whale-themed Dota heroes? That's what Radiant's I want to know. That's good. Uh, yeah, that's some affirmative action that needs to come into play. They can hate call blue whales or something? I can't even imagine what type of hero blue whale would be. Can you, like, what would it do? Just frickin' flop um, around? Uh, eat very small creatures that are hard Splash. to see. Splash. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, two splash. Lasers. Definitely Dude, shoot lasers. It doesn't. It's like it's just gonna flop around. There's no water except for the river. It has to stay in the water, the er, in the river, the entire time. That's it. That's how it works. Yes. Thanks, Lex. Lex. That's really just, have been seems a lot of good. Kills. You're Lex. totally right about that. But yeah, um, it is Spearbreaker here, level six now, so they can set up kills with him. But they're basically on the defense. Mama's boys is gonna be able to pressure extremely hard with about four heroes, and anti mage can basically do whatever he wants. Since all those early rotations didn't go well, and he's got all these regen items and tons of levels, it's just so scary for DC this game. Yeah, I mean, PyCat is going to have probably 14 minute Battle Fury at maybe the latest, unless he dies, maybe 15, 16 if he dies. We'll wait and see. Mason's just like, well, I need to get a medallion, and I'm not even at that yet. So his start is a bit lackluster. Of course, that death doesn't help him. Yeah. They really needed some early yeah. advantage here. Like, it, it would have helped a lot. Um, but now they can't really translate their Clinks and their Skyrath Mage into killing AM as well, since AM's now ahead. Those first couple deaths are a big deal, and they're also going to have a Pug Knight hero that doesn't scale extremely well, especially against heroes like Night Stalker. Ooh. So, it's going to be a hard oh, game. Boy. They cancel the charge with the Fisher. They're going to try to body block. They'll do their best. They'll right click him down the Shadow Strike, and that's an easy void for Sexy Bambo to pick up the kill. Now has uh, good components. Speed well, they'll take the Tier 2 tower down bottom. So Digital Chaos are doing their best to stay in this game by split pushing. And that will alleviate some of the pressure. It was almost a 4,000 net with advantage. Now down to about 2,000 from Mama's Boys. It's almost called the monkey business. But that's not actually a team game, so... So not too surprising here to see Dire move into the enemy jungle and the Radiant to move into the radi or the Dire jungle, but they do have a tower advantage right now. If they can defend this mid tower, it will be really, really big for DC. Pycat isn't there. He has top lane just going to work on this tier one tower, and he should find it. His claymore is done. His broadsword is only 800 gold away, and it looks like Monk. Ugh, God, Mama's boys will back together and look to rack or wrap around, maybe try to find a fight or something. I think that might be Roshin, actually. Which would be pretty impressive considering they are a radiant team. They it looks like they it. thought their opponents were Roshin. Yeah. So this is just they be... just used Wave of Terror into the Rush pit after smoking, so... And they're not obviously going to Rush, so they must have thought for sure that their opponents weren't there. That's because they went Tier 1, DC went to Tier 2 here, and then they ran up around like this, and they didn't necessarily see them going back to mid, so they thought they went from Tier 2 bottom to the Rush while Mama's Boys took the Tier 1 tower, so they thought that DC was taking a trade there. In reality, they weren't. DC got a slightly better side of the coin there. Yeah. Now, now heading to their jungle, so Digital Chaos will continue to farm away. There is now a Treads Drum for the Pug. Now, what's the item? Is it Aghanim Scepter this game? Let's see. Yeah, I've heard this lore before. Uh, that, that is the wrong Moonduck TV, by the way. There's no period in TV. Our... <laughs> there's, yeah, there's no period there. Sorry, Sorry it's not, not the first spelling mistake. Dakota was the one that, that <laughs> taught me that, that, uh, that uh, lore, by the way. He seems very proud of the fact that he killed nice soccer people. There's the Fisher coming out, Mason. Wave of Tear. Swap back. They don't have range. That was a good try. Valiant effort. Another really good uh, Dire Ward here on the mid lane, just slightly out of the commonly Dwarves spots. And that's two centuries now that I've missed that. Uh, this is something that I feel like DC often does. They stay ahead of the warding game by a little bit, just to know that, okay, these are common positions. If we can make them waste sentries and keep our Observer wards up longer, it will give us a tactical advantage. My cat has... <laughs> Come on.
Ultron. Come on. That's three. That's, that's I, don't, BS. I don't deserve that one. That's you three. definitely don't, dude. Slax is just handing these out like candy. I mean, you got one for being able to read, so I mean. <laughs> I mean, but I for me, that's difficult, one. though. Like, listen, I had to work really hard on being able to read. That's understandable. Right, I'm not going to follow that up with more questions because I don't want to embarrass you. <laughs> okay. Further than you just embarrass yourself. I mean. <laughs> listen, it's a big deal in my family. Oh, God. If I can't, we'll go ahead and chew his way through some of these true lines. I'll go ahead and just farm up with this battle fury. The Vlad is now done for Bulba. And they're Radiant definitely knows they're in Rush. They they saw the observer where they're shifting over. Bamboo, you saw they see Bamboo coming. Oh, Bamboo is going to get a double damage rune. Top lane, AY was getting jumped on by Pycat. That's ended. Now back down towards the Roche pit. And they softened it up. Roche is now close to half health. But while this is happening, Hook is like, I'll just take your mid tier one tower. And he's going to be going for Yules as well, which is interesting. Just to make sure you can get away from that ancient seal. So I like that choice. Well, their ward did get dewarded here, so Roshin's a little bit more scary. They're going to have to smoke to go into that if they do want to take it. Uh, Bamble's almost got his Aghanim Scepter, though. It's about 600 gold away. Really fast for an offlane. And then you can just sit around Rosh. You don't even have to need nice by Bulba. Yeah, that was good. All right. Where do we go from here? 12 to 2 to score. Pycat continues to get out of control. There's no way they can deal with him just yet. Pretty much throughout this entire game, unless they get some lucky dashes. They just don't have the damage right now. Maybe because he does have his only level 3 blink. But if it gets even bigger, this game gets so much harder. That you can actually just give up Roche as long as Pycat is getting farmed. I'm sure that's not what they want to do, but it's definitely an option to do that. All right, Observer Wards are gone by the Roche pit. This means that DC can take it pretty much on contested provision at the moment. Uh, also, a small mistake from Ventral Spirit. He placed this ward in the, on the cliff in the Dire Jungle, and while he was teleporting out, it turned to Day Vision, which meant that the tower spotted him. So they may be able to deward that as well. Well, that's not the best thing ever. There's the Roche. DC are trying to find their way back into this game with an age just now picked up for the Pugna, who like still that. is sitting at 1500 gold. I kind of like his build as well, like, um, Pugna's very, very strength gain limited. His int is really solid, but his strength is weak, so blind generic stat items are quite good, since it'll give him a lot of uh, overall HP and some good right-click attack speed, which is very good, because his damage is so high due to his int being high. So if you get a drum on him and you pop it, you can actually do pretty good physical damage. He's actually a slight threat to heroes like um, Anti-Mage, if, he uh, if there's somebody else disabling him. There's a charge going to Pike. They're getting a couple of heroes here up the He's going to go ahead and just blink away. They're going to try to turn on this. There's the match. Missile 1437 just found himself in a word of hurt. He does get off the nether strike. No, actually gets mana voided up in a cancel, but they still pick up the kill onto the Ventral Spirit nonetheless with the clinks going into strafe as well. Pike will be able to just TP away. Mystic Flare might have been dangerous, but they decided not to use as he would have probably made it away nonetheless. So they don't have the disables there to stop the AM from being able to TP and blink away. So. I think that was overall a good trade. Uh oh, is gonna get ancient oh, yeah, seal. He's got three yep, sir. Seriously, there's. He was on uh, four clovers the whole time. I yeah, believe. that can't so be. Probably just has some like dumb name or something. Yeah, that... definitely. Just look, look for four cleave or four clovers. I Meanwhile, they're gonna find out Falba. Borrow time is gonna be popped. Fuel scepter will go through. He's gonna get silenced up, and he's Still in trouble. Good. A phonic shield. Maybe. Not there yet. It will be in a moment, however. He'll stay alive. Here comes the Mystic Flare onto Hook. But he's fine for now. He blinks out. 1437 already using another strike, but there's going to be Decrep. And of course, that life drain going to work. And Bambo, if they can bring him down, he is a lot of net worth. They can get it. They can just somehow chase him. There's the conch shot. He's fast, Lost but this will damage. slow him down. Here's the charge coming through as well. Great void. Nether strike. He'll just have range for it. And they bring him down. 45 seconds. AUY2000 gets 765 gold. Meanwhile, Hook throws up the Sonic Wave. But Theban stays alive with just about 100 HP, and now AUI is up to 1,700 gold in the bank. That was such a good fight for DC there. They got advantage on almost all their heroes. Um, they were able to keep Boba alive as well. They, I think Mama's Boy did a great job limiting Boba's impact there by just focusing him and wasting his ultimate with the Yules, but he just got so far behind. Um, he, didn't our, our, you know, he just got away. He got away, he shielded himself, he sat on the outside of the fight, and he's like, alright, this isn't very safe. Oh, like, I, think what happened is, died. I think Night Stalker came in and killed him. That's okay. what happened, which put Night Stalker in that bad situation. Alright. Well? Yep, that's what happened. Um, Yule Scepter is the item for Pugna here. I was wondering if you'd go for a Sheep Rush, which is sometimes the right thing to do on Pugna. Especially against the heroes he's, he's having to deal with, such as, like... Uh, Queen of Pain and uh, Anti Mage, it can be really nice to have Hex, but he goes for a Yules, which will make him more survivable against heroes like Night Stalker. 
maybe gets the hex later, but here comes the Knight Stalker. He breaks right past Mason. Mason looking for a fight here. There's not that much mana up on the UR, but they can still fight this with three heroes, and he's just so damn fast with phase boots, whoever. He's going to stay nearby. There's no Orchid, obviously. No real way to slow him in Curse of Avernus, but he's going to back up towards that tier one tower. They won't find the kill. Mason will go ahead and death pack this uh, Centaur Conqueror and get back to pretty strong health. They did a good job acting. Pugna to pretend like that he didn't know Night Stalker was there. If he runs straight at Bambo, then it's obvious like Clinks is in the area. So they did a nice job there, but Bambo didn't fall for it, didn't get Yulst. And they will take this tier one tower down. They might lose their tier two tower, but they have Desolator money now up for Mason if they want it. Back towards mid, you can see AUI 2000. Looking to pick up a mech for himself. He's done this before. He's one of the very few that'll do it on Scarath Mage. They're getting two towers pressured, mid lane as well as bottom lane. Pycat is yeah, going to work there. Die. Oh, Courier. There's the courier going down. What was on that? That was a lot of gold. That is a death later now down on the deck for Mason. That is super frustrating. They'll take the tier two tower top lane. They're going to try to defend bottom. They will let mid go. Bottom lane about to fall. No glyph. Can they get the denial? Absolutely. Now there's the ancient seal coming out. Can they get this kill? Absolutely. Mystic flare for AUI 2000. That's a big pickup. And Soxa might not make it out as well. They'll get the last right click coming up. And Planks will do the job with that strafe. And they get the kill yet again. And they're, they're playing a little desperately there. I, I don't think Mama's Boys needs to take these kinds of like hero kills trades for towers. Like, yeah, DC has the gold advantage because they took more towers, but they don't have to give away the experience lead that they had previously, or at least like the general team play lead. Like, they had such a good early game, but now DC is just kind of outplaying them around the map and getting a lot of kills. Yeah, they're they're doing a, a pretty great job right now. DC are hitting their stride, sure. You know, they lost the last couple of moments, they lost their towers, but if you look at the net worth graph, it's 2,000 ahead for Mama's Boys, so... <laughs> Jesus. I bet he that's, deserved that's that good. one. I mean, I don't even know how he looked at his profile, but he probably didn't... He probably just searched the Pretty Twitch good. name, and apparently he... That might not even be the same Dota player, honestly. It could be somebody that's completely different. It's all right, continue Ooh. to judge him. There's going to be a decrep mystic player. Dear Lord, you are in oh, trouble. Pugna, he no himself up. He's lost the Aegis just at that last moment. The Sonic Wave will bring him down. Too much aggression, and unfortunately, the timing does not favor the Jumble Chaos. His AUI success will get chased down as well. There's the jump and scream of pain, the Shadow Strike as well. Mana Void, see you later, and a double kill for Hope. They're going to find 430s of it as well. They have a way to disable him. He'll charge out. Void was not there in time, but the oh, Fisher catches him beautifully from Yapsor. And then three dead on Digital Chaos side, and suddenly Mama's Boy back in the driver's seat. And if they could have just had that Aegis last for like five seconds longer, they could have won that fight possibly. Just because Pugna died almost instantly um, after he got initiated on there, and his Aegis was, was burned up while they killed the Ventral Spirit. So just a little unlucky for them, but either way, they probably would have lost the fight, maybe just not that bad. That was rough. The void's gonna come out, Boba. Silence up as well. Fesher will go Ooh, and they force up the borrowed time. He'll pop it off. Void's back up in two seconds. Great potty blocks. Boba's just trying to get back in. Void actually doesn't do damage because the borrowed time was still ticking for a couple more seconds. A couple half second, if you will. Instead, they'll Flex. focus on this tier two tower and tier two tower mid. <laughs> Jesus. Flex seems good. Yeah, that's a great set right there. Mm hmm. Good Pugman's stuff. going for uh, Aghanims this game. A little bit of an interesting choice. It can work very well if you're keeping one person alive. Um, and against silences and things like that, it can be very slow. Oh, they're going to echo on Boba. They know he doesn't have Boba. Yeah, and they just destroy him. Holy crap. He'll TP out, and Bambo can Ooh. just walk away. Nope, the Yules came through. They got Yapsor. Can they bring him down? And Chet Totem will go. Meanwhile, the Nether Strike onto Bambo on the other side. He's going to try to TP out. Look at this. The Scrape will come through. No, they'll get the kill. Well, Yapsor is is in the trees, and they know he's probably there. But can they find exactly him? where he was. They have like no way to like give vision over there, you know. Yeah, they could see the courier. Probably keep blinking, but well, he chose the right way here. Yeah, uh, he's fine. He's got no TP for another thirty nine seconds. But again, how do they scout him? They have to bring flying courier. That's like the only way. And that seems kind of dangerous. Yeah, if he enchant totems, yeah, he can one shot yeah, it. Kill and it yeah. They gotta deliver the Desso first, at least. They're just gonna like they're lose there. Yeah, they say that's fine. You got out. Good stuff. But he's still there for another 23 seconds. So that means he will not be a part of whatever's happening mm -hmm. next for Mama's boys. But uh, it's just back to the digital chaos, I think. I don't think they're gonna try to put any pressure awesome. here. I mean, they can do pressure. They got really? Spear Breaker, yeah, Lift, Wicker Ults, but SB Ult awesome. plus okay, uh, Scarath cool. Ulti is yeah, already really dangerous. Up. Just those two men gank squads, not to mention yeah. that Clinks can farm in the area, then pop out occasionally to help out with those kills if they want to do those.
they still have to am still has to worry he can still get charge bashed into an ultimate and be stunned for like four seconds or something they can kill him during that duration even if he has a manta that's fair Pocket is doing very well for himself though 600 gold top of the net worth oh that's a huge exit sack oh god we have terrible make it even easier eh, not really actually because it lowers their armor but the cleave damage done is based on your damage number, not on the minus armor. So actually, oh, okay. Wave of Terror only makes it easier for the direct unit that he's attacking. Common misconception. Well, he brought it down to Molesi. He gets some farm. Charge up top lane on the Bambo, but here comes Pycat. Will they fight this? There's the HCL Mystic Flare. Holy crap, did they kill him quickly? Pycat is blinked in. AY 2000 is avoiding a Mana Boy. There it goes. It almost brings it down, Thank but not you. yet. They're coming through. They're going to try to use yeah. the will grab it, and they yeah. will get AY. Still, the trade definitely favors the Shuttle Chaos in that they get a kill on a top net worth Night Soccer. Well, he's halfway up there, but still pretty damn solid in comparison to AY 2000. Yeah, I, I think it actually would have been better for AY if he didn't use Mech there. Uh, more or less, because he basically lost 225 mana by mechanic, but gained 250 HP. Which means that the mana void did like an extra 250 magic damage or something. He probably overall, I don't know, I feel like he should have saved it, maybe. Might have been better for him. Might not have been super efficient. BKB picked up for the clinks, Roche respawn in the minute 40. We'll see if anybody wants to take that. We're back to farming, though. You are trying to get up to his Agate Scepter. He's actually a thousand gold away from that. What about Mama's Boys? Do they have anything in particular coming out? We already saw Hook pick up the Agate Scepter. The App Store has a blank dagger. Bambo is getting towards BKB. They'll smoke up. Let's try to find a fight. Well, it looks like they're going to spot us here, Brick, at least. There's Night Soccer ulti. They see him. Mo I don't know if they got him. They see him now. They pinged him out. They just saw him, I think. They see you are as well. That's probably the hero they want to go on. Oh, he's, is he's, nearby as well. He's not going to uh, eggs on Pugna. He's actually going like either Bloodstone or Octarine. Oh, okay. 437 will get caught. Fisher came through. They still locked him to death. And it is a soul booster. So Octarine, I guess, maybe. It could be Bloodstone if you just want extra mana. I mean, he has good mana regen as it is, but. I feel like. I don't know. Bloodstone, if that's your go. The nice thing about Bloodstone versus Aim is that his ulti is going to do far less damage to you because you're always going to be regenerating more mana. Um, but the downside is that if you're stunned while he goes on you, then it's just more mana pool to drain before he ults you. Um, if you get Octarine, yeah, you get extra heal out of your life drain, but I don't know if the Ruse cooldown. It might be worth it because it increased your farm rate by a lot. Nether Blast cooldown being reduced. You get more Nether Wards off, stuff like that. Maybe that's his goal here to have multiple Nether Wards in a team fight, but he just completely wasted his Nether Ward there. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think Octarine is much better than Bloodstone, I would say. That's my call. He would have too much mana regen if he got Bloodstone heals. Yeah. We'll wait and see. He's still got a while away before he can pick that up. Clinks does pick up his BKB, by the way. He's got that going for him now. Somebody else just picked up a BKB. I don't know who it was, but maybe I'm crazy. They will be fighting here. They smoked. And smoked up. They're going to head right in. 1437 will be caught first. Bambo has the vision. They're looking for somebody. They'll find Bambo. Instead, he's through the tree line. They don't have vision anymore. They're going to charge him at the van. But here comes Mason. Already kills him in three hits. The Vengeful Spirit has gone down. Pycat will blink away and make it out. Roche is up. And it looks like this is the opening line for DC to go ahead and take this bad boy and get the Aegis back up for Clinks. Or whoever for that matter. But it looks like they want to contest this. They're thinking about it. DC would have loved to have more grabs in that. Oh, jump great in. silence. Silence comes in as Yatsu was looking for the Echo Slam, but he gets sucked dry. He can't even get anything off of the fight. And here comes Pycat. Mana Boy, not killing promises, but they will get it with the Sonic Wave coming out from the Queen of Pain. Clicks trying to do all that he can, and Bambo is getting low. And Pycat corralling all of them back into the Rose Pit. They'll lose 1437. Ball was running in. He's got his borrowed time, but he's already used it. Working on Hook. He'll blink out. Mason doesn't have his death back anymore. He's out of mana. Can they bring him down? The Aphotic Shield will not keep him alive. Bulba gets stuck. Well, scream of pain, Mama's boy, they get a triple kill for Pycat, and they will take Roshan as well. What a fight. And that mana drain was so big. Uh, it looked great for DC at the start due to the silence on the Earthshaker by AUI, but they just couldn't pick heroes off, and that's them lacking stuns, basically. If your opponents aren't getting stunned, they're going to be able to run away and kite you, and that's exactly what happened there. I mean, you could maybe criticize the Spear Breaker. When the, first, when the fight first happened, he charged for the Night Stalker that was on the side of the fight, rather going for the clump of heroes and the, and the to the south of him. Um, and he didn't even, he died without using his ulti, which I find a bit peculiar as well. I feel like he should have had at least one opportunity to do that, but maybe he was targeted, maybe he was uh, separated, maybe he kept getting silenced by the Night Stalker or something, but no, no Spirit Break ulti comes out because of that, no stuns for DC. 
Yeah, and this is going to leave DC vulnerable to a high ground push here pretty soon. As they are now down 10,000 in net worth, they have a pretty farm to AM who might want just another item before fighting. It looks like it is going to be the Abyssal that he's grabbing. He'll have that ready to go, so some extra damage. He's pretty tanky at this point. There's the BKB for Bambo, so we can avoid a lot of this. There's also a gem on the ground, which he'll probably pick up here. Sell his wand or dust, more than likely his dust. And actually both to get a TP scroll too, maybe. Hey, he says, screw it, I don't need that. And uh, within the next five minutes, I imagine we're going to see a push here, Purge. What do you think? Um, it may not be that soon. I, I feel like Mama's voice feels pretty comfortable. Once AM gets ridiculous, it's just gonna be really hard for Klinks to deal with it. Like, if he gets a butterfly or something, Klinks is gonna need an MKB to even deal with AM. Oh, Pycat just a pistol that UI. Oh, that was a beautiful decrep coming out. The mana void's not enough. They yules him up so he can't chase any further. But here comes that Fisher. It'll hit onto AUI. He'll find at least that kill. Maybe not. A product shield decrep going again. And Pycat just can't find these kills. They still pick up the one on the Spirit Breaker. Bulba doesn't use his bar time yet. And only dead for 39 seconds is Thieving. It could have been a lot that worse. Was, that was okay. Oh, I didn't realize that Spirit Breaker died somewhere else. Um, that would have been really good for them if F-Speed didn't die, because they, they didn't use any super long duration ultimates or anything. They're, they're all going to get healed up here, and they should be able to take the fight. Spirit Breaker is not dead for too long. 20 seconds before he respawns, he's got buyback. I highly doubt he wants to use it, and he won't probably have to either. And Abyssal Blade will be back in 15 seconds. The creep wave pushed in. They're going to try to go for Boba there. He's got far a time. It'll get popped off. Get silenced up as well. So that's now a cooldown for 46 seconds. Now the, the door to the tier 3 tower is open. They're going to try to bring this Nether War down. Great deep prep onto the Nether War just to make sure they can't take it. But they finally will right click it with Hook. Getting the last hit. Piecat, he's got his mental style at the ready. Here we go. Echo Slam onto three. Now they will find an easy kill on the Clips with no buyback. And Thieven, as well as Bubble, will be in the next to fall. Yoar will yule himself. AUI to death gets caught. And that is GG. It all ends in just a moment. And Mama Boys, they run right in and absolutely destroy Digital Chaos of five man white. Slax, so that's the wrong version of Yoar. Any, anyways, um. Mama's Boy definitely outplayed DC, that was pretty clear. The early laning stage, Bambo just absolutely stomped it. Their early rotations were good. DC had a couple good fights, but that early coordination that they really needed to transition them would have would have done so much. Because if DC did get early advantage, if the Spirit Breaker did well, if Skyrath Mage did super well, if the Pugna and Klinks had a slightly